Let's talk about Facebook. Now, I'm sure most of you out there have used Facebook, and a lot of you probably know a lot more about Facebook than I know. So I'm not going to try to, to teach you how to use Facebook today. But what I am going to do is talk about Facebook and privacy. Facebook has got a lot of press over the last few months about how it works as privacy. It's continually shifting, changing uh, its privacy standards and what it shares with others. And my personal feeling is when I'm on Facebook, I like to be very careful about what information gets shared. Again, you know, it's all about being professional. And, and actually, when you look at my, if you ever do look at my Facebook page, you'll see that there's no photos of my children or other personal information that I don't want the whole world to see. Uh, when you click on the Facebook, you know, it's really important if you're using it currently to go in, click on account, and go to privacy settings and adjust your privacy settings. Click on profile information and you'll see a list of the privacy settings. Now the interesting thing is, is Facebook's been making changes to the privacy settings and they don't look exactly like this anymore and I think they'll continue to make changes as they get more and more heat from the public and the press about uh, the ability to tune your privacy more to the way you would like it. But basically in the privacy settings you can go through here and you can tell on the different bits of information about yourself who can see that. Is it everybody? Friends of friends, only friends, or you can customize and tune it in. For, for me, I'm more comfortable with letting only my friends see most of my information. And some things I like to let friends of friends see as well. Now the thing is you have to drill into some areas specifically to adjust the information that you might have in that specific area. So for example, under the photo settings, you actually have to go in and for your different sets of photos, adjust each one independently. So for most, I only let my friends see it. Some I let like my profile photo, my friends of friends, and then maybe some of the wall photos where I put more business type photos on, I'll let everybody see that. But the choice is up to everybody to make on what you share and don't share. My advice is to start, again, crawl, walk, and run, and only share a little bit of information and slowly open up what you may feel comfortable with. Now for Facebook, the big thing for businesses is to create a fan page. To do that, just go to Facebook, www.facebook.com advertising, and again, that is built into this presentation. Click on Pages, and click on Create a Page, and you can create your own Facebook page. Just follow the wizard, give your page a name, and click Create Page, and you will have a Facebook page. Now what, now what should you do with it now? Um, you should post a message. You know, first thing you should do is add your logo. You can just click on you know, edit the page and add a logo. Um, post some photos on your Facebook fan page. Uh, edit the page, add some apps, some events maybe, some links to maybe your main website. Uh, start a discussion board. Maybe if you have some videos, post them there that are about your business. And get some fans, you know, broadcast out to your customer base that you have a fan page or, or let folks know, put it in your newsletter, you know, get the information out there that you've got a fan page. Uh, add a button and link to your website and add your emails as well. By the time there's a case study in your specific industry, it's going to be way too late for you to catch up. And that's a quote from Seth Godin. And basically he's saying, you know, by the time people are learning about it, and uh, really have some good studies about it, you know, the early adopters are going to be too far ahead to catch up. And I agree with that a little bit, but not completely. I believe there's always going to be a time uh, to get into social media, uh, whether it's now or two years from now. And again, in two years, it might be something totally different that we're doing in social media because things are moving so fast. Uh, here is a Facebook page for McLean Insurance Services. Uh, just an example of a fan page, and, and I actually know for a fact that this agency has generated new uh, business premium as a result of having a fan page. Uh, here's another example of an agency who's been doing a very good job uh, using social media. This is actually the Vaughn agent, Insurance Agency, and that fellow standing right there in the middle is Nibby Priest. Nibby is very, very active uh, in social media groups and uh, does a great job. You can see in their website that they have a blog um, available, they use Facebook, they have live chat, and you can actually see their site at uh, govon.com, and again that link is in this presentation. Uh, Jason Verlindi is a local Michigan user here who does a lot of tweeting uh, with uh, 
Twitter and post a lot of information on Facebook and he is somebody else that I feel is doing a good job of using social media to further uh, his cause uh, in the insurance channel. And this is a guy, Ray Gill, not in insurance, but another example of somebody that uh, Wayne and I feel are, is doing a great job uh, using Twitter to communicate out there to people on the internet and actually you know he shares a lot of useful information but when you actually go to his website myfitnessdepot.com lots of good articles and things there but also links to buy products that are related to the uh, you know running or jogging industry Crescent Valley Insurance also another example of an agency uh, using different social media sites so if we look here you can see that they have a video that you can watch and you can actually uh, click on that and watch it from this presentation and they have their join our Facebook page here and actually if I go to the next page, uh, page here is their actual Facebook page and we can see on theirs they're posting photos of different events and things that they've done uh, with their agency to help bring them closer to their customers and potential customers and actually here's a video that they did as well now this video is uh, kind of funny and uh, we're going to talk more about that in a minute but they have a video on YouTube and I probably have a few more now and here's another example of an agency in Atlanta Insurance Live uh, weekly they do he does a video uh, and he gives insurance tips uh, on different things from how to check the treads of your tires to uh, just all kinds of information out there to kind of get his name out there and, and bring people in to learn about them and their website and hopefully sell them more insurance here's another one and again all of these links are in the presentation insurance beacon uh, out of Texas they have a little bit of a different approach they have a kind of a funny video and they get very serious at the end and they tell you uh, their customers what you know they're all about and here's an interesting site it's called will it blend a lot of you may have heard of this already but this is a blender company and why am I showing you them in our presentation today and that's because they have successfully done what's called going viral. Going viral is basically means being posting something up on the internet, could be in YouTube, could be in other areas, but primarily YouTube seems to be the, the mechanism for going viral. And that is something that's very interesting, maybe funny, maybe just kind of cool. And when it's viral, it means that you know people who see it want to share it with their other friends. So it gets posted up there, one friend shares it with two friends, those friends share it with two more, and two more, and two more, and two more, and so on. And you get a lot of, uh, I'll call it eyeball space, or a lot of press this way. So Willow Blend started by blending different unusual items in their blenders. They are a blending company, they make blenders. And as you can see over here, some of their videos have got over 300,000 views, 250,000, 495,000 views you know 700 you know almost 800,000 views now they sell a very high-end blender it cost about $300 for that blender in most stores they have a hard time selling their blender because that's pretty pricey but when people watch these videos and watch them blend an iPad or an iPhone or a 2x4 uh, at the end it takes them to their website and they're selling blenders like crazy they made their first video they spent $50 uh, I don't know what their budget is today but I'm sure it's increased tremendously and they they have more than quadruple their sales in blenders uh, just by posting a, a funny or unique uh, YouTube video